Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today we will see how to create this kind of effect. It's a particle system with the morph between two different shapes and the change of color and texture based on the scale of your animation. You can of course easily adjust in real time the shape and color of your effect and if you want you can also find the file for this project as well as all my other projects on my Patreon. Ok, enough talk, let's go. So the first thing to do is to create the shape that we are going to use for the morphing. As in my example, I will start from a cylinder, but you can choose the shape you want. Okay, I will now duplicate this shape and apply an edit poly modifier on it. I will now select vertices and modify my object as I want. You can also add different modifiers on top of it. Once we are satisfied with our shape, what we want is to move from one shape to another smoothly. I will therefore select my first shape and I will add a more form modifier. I can now select my second shape. And I'm just going to play with the value here to create my morphing. You can of course animate the keyframe to create the morphing you want. I want to transform my object into a sphere, so I will just select the spherify modifier. We see here that we have our shape and we will be able to adjust the transition with the percentage. My sphere shape is not perfect, so I will just increase the cap segment a bit. I will now go to frame 0 and set my percent to 0. Go to frame 50. Put the value of 100 and return to 0 from frame 30. Perfect. Ok, I will just change my range to see my looping animation. Ok, it's cool. But it's not really perfect. I want for the sphere shape to stay longer. For this I will open a track view. Graph editor, track view. And here in the spherify tab we can see the curve of my animation. I will now select the end keyframe and switch them to linear mode. I zoom in a bit and I'm going to adjust the curve in the middle. I hold the control key on my keyboard and I will stretch the curve on both sides. We see that we have a curve that goes quickly to the middle key and which goes down at the end of the animation. We can now see what it looks like on our animation. It's perfect. Ok, that's it for the morphing part. I'm just going to increase the subdivision a bit to have a well defined shape. Perfect. I can hide this shape because I don't need it anymore. And now I will create the shape that will serve me to fix my particles. I will therefore create a simple torus. That I rotate to 90 degrees. I will increase the subdivision a bit to have a correct mesh and modify the radius a little. Perfect. Now we will see the type flow setup. I therefore create a type flow setup here. Open editor. And I will create a burst. 0 and 0 for the beginning. 200 particles. I will now add a position object and pick my torus. I also select geometry for the display, but we see that nothing appears, it's because I have to create a shape. Then shape. I delete this element and I will now add the cylinder that I created previously. I will now enable the size and lower the scale a bit, maybe 40. I can add a rotation operator and the spin to activate the movement. And now what we want is this physical simulation, so I will add a physics shape. We can see that we have a physical simulation, but we don't want collision or gravity, so I'm going to go to type flow, physics, and deselect gravity and ground collider. I will also increase the sub-step of my simulation to have something correct. And if I run my simulation, we see that everything explodes. So to fix that, I will create a fine target. I select my torus to tell my particle to search for this shape. 
We see that the particles always collide with each other, so I go back to my physics shape operator and I'm going to set the restitution and the friction to zero. Perfect. I'm also going to increase my spin a bit to get more movement. And we can see that we have a very good simulation. What I want now is to activate my particle progressively for my morphing. So I will create a box. And I will animate this box from the top to the bottom of my simulation with two keyframes. Like that. Maybe more on 60 frames. And I think it's good like this. I return to Typeflow and I will now create a surface test. I will now copy the physics shape into a new event. Same for the spin and the shape. Link this event to the surface test. Change the color of the display for better visibility. And in this surface test, I will pick my activation box. Perfect. We can see with the color change that the activation works. Now what we want is to change our shape into a sphere in this movement. So I go to shape and I activate animated geometry. The values are good, so I don't change anything here. I disable the loop, of course, and I add a little bit of random offset and variation, very light. We can now see what it looks like in our animation. It's really good. It's a really cool first look. Okay, now what we want is for my sphere to grow during the transition. I will therefore add a scale operator. Change the mode to relative multiply and up the value maybe 105. We can now see that we have a big continuous inflation during the animation and what we want is to return to the initial position. We will therefore have to save and find our original scale. So I will add the custom properties. Rename it, scale origin, and save the scale in custom vector. Scale origin to for my channel name, and I will now duplicate this operator in the second event. I want this operator not to activate instantly, but after maybe 10 frames. So I will therefore go to filter, enable, add, and change the property to event age. Greater, of course, and I will set a value of 10 for 10 frames. I can now go to operation and select get. I obviously pass the timing in continuous. And if I run my animation, we can see that after 10 frames, the scale returns to its initial value. It's nice, but we see that the transition is still very aggressive and we want something smoother. So I'm going to go in the custom vector and decrease the interpolation. Maybe 0 0.3. And if I restart the animation, we can see that it's much better like that. Beautiful and smooth. Okay, it's really cool. Okay, now that we are satisfied with our animation, what we want is to apply a transition in our texture. I will therefore create another custom properties. Rename it, scale magnitude. And I will go to custom float to save the scale magnitude. We will use this value to apply our color transition. I change the name of the channel also, scale mag and I will duplicate the custom properties in the second event and change the timing to continuous. Okay, now what we are going to do is to apply a texture to see how it reacts. I have here a very material and I will create a gradient ramp for my diffuse. And I can now apply this texture to my type flow setup. Okay, we see that it's really not good because we don't have mapping information in type flow. I will now create a mapping operator. 
select mapping from custom float and the scale map channel. We can adjust the gradient a little to have a stronger right. I will now go to a frame where we have our morphing to be able to see the change in live. And I will duplicate this mapping operator in the second event. Timing to continuous. And we are starting to see the change. It's not perfect yet. We don't have a beautiful transition. So what we are going to do is enable the normalized values and put a very low value for the max, maybe like 2. We really have a great transition in the gradient from texture, but we can see here that the color is not the right one. I therefore return to the mapping operator of my first event, and I will also activate the normal as value. And it's perfect. We now have a really good color transition depending on the size of our object. We can obviously adjust the gradient as we want. And we will use this texture to make the transition between two materials. I therefore create a very blend material. Hiding my gradient in the blend one. And now I will create two materials that I will simply link to my base and to my cut one. You can of course create the material you want. I then apply the very blend to my type flow setup. And I don't forget to create a mesh operator for my two events, otherwise I wouldn't see anything in my rendering. And now I can start my rendering. I will add the light to better see what I've created. And we can see our type flow simulation with the morph between two shapes and at the same time a variation in color and texture. It's really cool. It's of course up to you to see the texture you want to apply, but you have the basis for creating shape and texture morph with Typeflow. Okay guys, it's over for this tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot of things. Don't forget to subscribe and the thumbs up if you like my work. And you can of course follow me on Instagram, Beyond, and you can find this project and a lot more on my Patreon. See you soon for next tutorial guys. Bye.